Hello, my name is Livia Martinez and I'm a current freshman at William & Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. And if you're clicking on this video, you're either one, a really stressed out college student who doesn't know where the heck they're going to be next semester, two, interested in a school that you recently have accepted and decided to go to, William & Mary, or three, you're just like, what the heck is a William & Mary? So I'm here to explain the pros and cons of William & Mary, and hopefully by the end of this, you will have a better understanding of the campus, campus life, and why you should come here, or at least in my opinion. And by the way, I am not sponsored by William & Mary in any way. I'm paying out-of-state tuition, which we will get to $65,000, but we don't have to talk about that yet. If you guys hear this weird in the background, it is my AC, and we'll also get to that in a minute. So first off, let's talk about the dorms at William & Mary, because they get a bad rap. I am in Griffin C, which is part of the GGV complex, and <laughs> everywhere on Reddit or anything like that, you're gonna see people being like, oh my god, if you get GGV, leave immediately. It's terrible. There are bugs. There's no AC. It's crusty in there. I'm in GGV right now. Is my room clean? No. That's my fault, not the complex's fault. Is it a little crusty? Yeah, but crusty builds character, and I genuinely can't imagine being anywhere else. Some of the nicer dorms, cough cough lemon, are just beautiful, but they are just so sterile. And if you get there, lucky you. I mean, you're living the life of luxury because it, it really is nice. But the few times I've been in there, I'm like, this is giving hospital chic core vibes. And it's just hard to make friends in a dorm like that. And you know, I have a lot of friends at big SEC schools who, you know, have queen size beds, their own room, bathrooms, just everything like that. And that's awesome for them because they're living in a more comfortable environment, but it's not as social of an environment. I mean, all of my best friends live in Griffin C with me, and I have a lot of friends in Griffin B and D too because all the dorms are right next to each other. And if you're a freshman at William and Mary, you're most likely to get GGV, so don't be like praying to God being like, "Please don't let me in" because you'll probably end up in GGV. I have two really good friends who literally cried when they saw that they were in Griffin C. They cried. My roommate and I, Alexis, who's my roommate, uh, she's from New Jersey and I'm from Dallas, Texas, and we both had no idea what was going on at William & Mary, so when we got it, we were like, oh, cool. Like, we didn't know that it was notoriously terrible, and then we started hearing things and seeing pictures, and I will say, the pictures on the website do not do this justice. It is terrifying. It looks like you're gonna be, like, massacred in here, but it is not like that. The bathrooms are not that bad. The rooms are fairly spacious. I mean, that's my side. We lofted our beds, which I'll also get to in a minute, and it's fine. You will be fine. Okay, I said I'll get to it in a minute. I'm getting to it in 12 seconds. Lofting your bed, don't recommend, don't do it. It is so annoying. We are like three feet away from the ceiling. I feel like I'm in a coffin every night and it's sort of cozy, but not the vibe. Don't loft your bed no matter what. I don't care if your ceilings are way higher. It's such a pain and just don't, don't recommend the lofting. So to recap dorms, you will be fine in whatever dorm you get in. If you get into the, one of the nicest dorms, which is Lemon, Yates is really nice, and Yates is also really social. I recommend when you do your dorm options to put Yates as number one if you want to get in a dorm with like a lot of athletes and more social people because that's how you get in. Because everyone says Lemon's number one, and therefore not everyone gets Lemon. But if people say Yates is number one, you're probably going to get Yates. So if you want a more social and nice dorm, Yates is probably the best option. And if you get stuck in GGV, you're going to meet lifelong friends. I have so many upperclassmen who've told me that they still room with the people they met in GGV. I haven't heard that from anyone in Lemon, so you will be fine. Next up, the food options. So William & Mary, we have three dining halls, CAF, Sadler, and Marketplace. And then we have other options, which is like Chick-fil-A. We have a lot of stores where you can, like convenience stores where you can buy food. We have Cadoba, we have Cozy's, which is kind of an off-brand Panera. Not as good, but it's, it's still good. It's not bad. And we have a few other things that now I'm not, can't remember, that you can use your dining dollars. Oh, the Bake Shop, which is super good. They make these croissants and their coffee's really good. I don't drink coffee, but that's what I've heard. And stuff like that. And the dining plans, you'll be fine with whichever one you pick. I have, gold, one se block 175, I don't know what it's called, but I have the one where you have 175 meal swipes for a semester and then I think 450 dining dollars, something like that, and 
oh my gosh, it's the last month of school and I have 400 dining dollars left and I'm just buying stuff as much as I can because with dining dollars you can buy stuff like soap or saran wrap or Ziploc bags, anything like that. So I'm just like hauling, I have so many dining dollars left, I need to spend them because you don't get your dining dollars back at the end of the year. They do roll over from semester to semester, but I, these $400, if I don't spend any of them, they're gone, which makes me so mad because I'm cheap and I am an out of state student which let's get to out-of-state expenses and in-state expenses. William & Mary is a notoriously expensive in-state school and most people who come here are from the in-state. I think they pay 30, 35,000 a year. Out-of-state, me, uh, you pay about, I think, 65,000 and it is not fun. It is very pricey. If you are struggling with that or thinking, oh, I can't afford this, they are really good with aid. You know, you can petition for financial aid even after you're in. And if they don't give it to you at first, keep petitioning, keep emailing people because they want you to come here. They want you to strive to be successful. They genuinely want the best for you. You know, I petitioned for just a tiny grant because I needed some money. Come on. Come on, William and Mary, help me out. Help a sister out. And they actually gave it to me. They gave me a little bit of money, which wasn't anything amazing, but it was something. Anything's better than nothing. And I recommend applying for scholarships, even though it's the biggest hassle in the world. Not William and Mary scholarships, just scholarships in general. Real annoying, but it helps, you know? You'll be like, oh, $500 is nothing in the grand scheme of 65000 Maybe so, but like, it's still $500, you know? I mean, it pays for what half a dining plan something like that like if you think about it like that it can help and also I didn't really finish up my dining plan thing but basically the food it's fine it's not great for people who have dietary restrictions like I have a few friends who have major gluten allergies and the school's not very good about providing supplements for that and they're also not good for vegan or vegetarian people but I think I have a suspicion they're going to get a lot better next year because they're super understaffed right now and as long as they get more staff, which with COVID limits getting lower, everything's kind of opening back up, we don't have to wear masks in class or anything like that, I think that their employees will skyrocket, or at least I hope, and I think that will make the food better and there'll be more options, but there really are a lot of options if you don't have dietary restriction. And if you do, William and Mary is working on that. I can tell they are. There have been a few articles about the food issues, and I think they gotta change it. And if not, the parents will like have their pitchforks and be like, ah, you need to change this. So don't worry about the food. You probably hear bad things, but it's getting better. I mean, it's already gotten better this semester from last semester. So we on the rise, whammy folk, we on the rise. By the way, whammy is William and Mary. Next, I'm gonna talk about like nightlife and Greek life. So Greek life on campus, people are like, you don't have to join Greek life to have fun. And that's true to an extent, but like the beginning of the year, I kind of had wished I joined Greek life. I think I'm going to be rushing next semester. And that's just because you can go to parties. You can do whatever you want. I figured it out all last semester and this semester. It's totally fine if you're friends with people in Greek life. But Greek life is a big part of the school. It's surprising because it's not a Georgia or an Alabama or anything like that. But it is helpful to be in Greek life. And if you want to be involved in something and know, like, I have something to do every single Friday night, I would recommend doing Greek life. For me, I'm an only child. I'm sort of an introvert. And I'm in a lot of clubs, which I'll get to in a minute. So it's not like the biggest thing in the world to me. Like, I always have something to do. But if you're someone who is like, I need to be with people every second. Greek life's good for you. And also, Greek life here is so different. You know, I, again, come from Dallas, or Frisco, Texas. That's where I'm from. And there, everyone's planning to go to OU, Auburn, Alabama, Georgia, whatever. And so, with my friends, I remember making a resume for sororities and sending it. Because I was planning to rush, but it was on Zoom last semester. And I was like, nah, fam. I'm not doing that. I'm not Zoom rushing. And so, I made this whole resume with, like, my headshots. It was like a... It was a headshot, a three-quarter shot, and a full body shot. It was just like all these different parameters. And then William and Mary's like, what is that? Or the Greek life. They were like, no, you don't need to do that. And that's amazing. It is not competitive at all. You're going to fit in in the place where you are meant to be. You know, I have a few friends who had horror stories just because they didn't mesh well with the big they were assigned or something like that. But other than that, people are just it works out, you know, and there really isn't a social hierarchy here, and the people who do rank sororities and stuff, they need to figure their lives out, because there's a lot more to worry about than Greek life and what sorority's cool and what's not. 
And same with frats, you know. I have a lot of good friends who are in frats and they're awesome guys and they're not creepy at all. But of course there are a few creeps. You know, that's life and it stinks and I hope they grow out of it. But that's how it is. But each frat, honestly, I've never felt uncomfortable in a frat. And for me personally, I don't drink, but I have friends who do drink and they haven't really felt uncomfortable either. So it's a very safe campus. It's a good feeling. You don't feel like you're going to be you know, attacked or anything like that, even though there are cases of things just like on every campus, which is so sad, and they need to figure that out. Guys, you need to figure li your lives out. Stop doing this to women. Back to nightlife, there's stuff to do. You know, I know a lot of people who say that William & Mary is thought of as like a suicidal school and just all this pressure and stuff, and that's not the case, you know? I mean, people are stressed, but I, everyone I know is relatively happy, and if they're not happy, it has nothing to do with Whammy. It's something else, you know? The school does a very good job of having a positive atmosphere, even though classes are tough and they are rigorous. I mean, this is a public IV, so things are gonna be hard. And since it is a public IV, I think that William & Mary feels kind of this pressure to be harder than it needs to be just because to attain that status or whatever. And that's sort of frustrating. I'm struggling in econ right now, but it's okay, because I did good on my last midterm, so we're, we're vibing. It's okay, I'll be fine. And so will you if you come to William & Mary. You got into this school for a reason and you're gonna be totally fine. But don't think that this school has nothing to do and it's just study, study, study. The good thing about it though is if you are someone who wants to study, 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 you'll never be judged for that, you know? I like to go to parties sometimes, but some Saturday nights I just wanna hang out in my room and watch a movie and everyone's like, oh, go off queen, like, good for you. And that's awesome, like that's so nice. People aren't just like, oh, you're a loser who isn't gonna go out on Saturday night? No, no one does that. No one pressures you to drink, no one pressures you to do anything like that. And that's something that's really good for me and hopefully really good for you and should make you feel better. Okay, so registration at Whammy is a disaster. And I mean class registration. And I'm gonna make a video about class registration and all that, but that is one of my two biggest issues. They make it so competitive for no reason. Like they make you wake up at 8 a.m. to register for classes and they're always full and there's always something. But I will say, it seems like the end of the world, but everyone I know has gotten the classes they need, even if their registration um, portal crashed or something like that. So it is stressful at the time and it's an unneeded stress that they need to figure out, but it's not the end of the world and you will get into the classes you need to graduate or for your degree. And if you don't, it's a small enough campus that the professor will let you in. I promise. Send emails. Don't be afraid to send emails to professors. It doesn't matter what college you go to. Send emails. Send emails. I will say that classes here are really excellent. Every professor I've had, I had a really good experience with. Ray, my professor, is your best friend because there are some flop professors. My roommate Alexis has, she has a few flops and she's not a big fan of those professors. But what do you know? On the Ray, my professors, it's real stinky. And because Ray, my professor, doesn't lie. It doesn't lie. My second biggest qualm with William & Mary is as an out-of-state kid, it is hard to get back home. You know, we are in Williamsburg, Virginia, and there is an airport 30 minutes away, but that airport tends to have, you know, connecting flights and stuff like that. And flying to Dallas, it's just easier to go straight. But because of that, I normally fly out of Richmond or Norfolk, which are both, yeah, Norfolk, to say that three times fast. But both of those are about 50 minutes away, and it's, fine it's not too far but like it's a struggle if you want to uber you know it's like seventy dollars and that's annoying but there is this facebook group called tribe rides which is very helpful and i found so many rides through it so join that if you're an out-of-state kid or even an in-state kid because a lot of people live in northern virginia which we call nova and all the nova kids you know over thanksgiving break or fall break or anything like that they all get together cluster in a little car and drive to nova together or drive to the airport you know for fall break I needed to go to Boston to visit my boyfriend so I found this girl and she drove me to Richmond and she was on a different flight but our times matched up and then she drove me back to campus after Boston you know and it worked out great and so honestly it is stressful but it leads to some funny stories I've had some very uncomfortable rides with people just like awkward just not like in a bad way just like making conversation with them and stuff not my favorite thing in the world, but it's a free ride, you know, what can you do? And so that's my other qualm. And also, not having a car on campus is a struggle too, but you figure it out, you know? A lot of my friends have cars somehow, they just finesse the system, and you'll figure it out, you know? It's kind of fun, and in a weird way, I feel like I'm in some sort of J.D. Salinger novel or something like that, because 
I don't have a car on campus, you know, I don't have access to the outside. It's like it's such a small community in Williamsburg, which is great. And I love that. It works so well for me. And that's how college used to be. That's how college always was. You know, it wasn't in a big city or anything like that. You were meant to go somewhere and to learn and to socialize with people and to be in crusty dorms and to not really know how you're going to get home the next time until the time comes. And I've still been able to go to so many concerts and do so many fun things, go to so many museums. There's just so many opportunities that I've still had that I worried not going to a big city school would, you know, stop me from. You know, I'm going to Charlie XCX this weekend. I went to JPEG Mafia, 100 Gex, Animal Collective. And I found rides through all of this through the radio station. And the radio station's an awesome thing. Shout out radio station. I'm a trained DJ and I get my show once a week. And that's really fun too. But there are just so many clubs that work to your interest. You know, there's Nerf Club on Saturday nights, which is such a fun club. I mean, literally, they rent out an entire academic building and just all heck breaks loose. Everyone's like shooting Nerf guns at each other. Did it kind of hurt? Yeah, but it was my workout for the weekend. <laughs> and then I'm also in, okay, now I'm just going on this weird tangent of what clubs I'm in, but may as well. I'm also in Rocket Magazine. I'm the digital editor, which is amazing. I'm a freshman and they're letting me be the digital editor. What? But in Rocket Magazine, it's a fashion magazine on campus, and it is such an amazing opportunity. If you're a creative person, I recommend Rocket. I recommend Vinyl Tap, which is the music magazine, which I wrote a music review for FKA Twigs' latest album, Capri Songs, um, for that. Man, I'm just shouting everything out. But there are creative outlets. Even though you're not going to a giant big city school, you'll be totally fine. That was my AC turning on again, and I think that's my cue to go. But thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope that you are at William & Mary next semester, or that this introduced you to William & Mary, because it is a truly great school, and it deserves more hype, in my opinion. Bye, guys. Again, my name is Livia Martinez, and follow me on Instagram at LiviaMartinez8 for any questions or concerns about William & Mary. Just DM me. I will answer you, or maybe I'll make a video or something. We'll see. Bye, guys. Bye.